All right. Thank you all for joining. We're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome to our Coming Back Online webinar. We are really excited to partner with ZipRecruiter to share this content with you today. My name is Natalie Morgan. I'm the Director of HR at CareerPlug. Um, and I also have Clint Smith, our founder and president, as well as Jody Beals from ZipRecruiter. I'm going to let them introduce themselves in a minute, but just a few housekeeping items as we go through. So you are all on mute, uh, just so we can minimize background noise, as well as record this presentation so you can access it after the fact, or, and people can view it if they didn't have a chance to attend live today. Um, as we go through, feel free to drop questions in the Q&A. We're going to try to save some time at the end so Clint and Jody can answer your questions. But without further ado, let's jump in here. So Clint, could you get us started by introducing yourself? Yeah, hey everyone, thanks for joining. I'm uh, Clint Smith, founder and president of CareerPlug, and uh, I'm a business owner or operator just like you are, and uh, really trying to figure a lot of things out through this uh, this whole past few months, uh, it's been interesting. Uh, but there are some opportunities uh, within all this time and uh, some great talent out there looking for uh, new opportunities. So I uh, look forward to sharing some uh, some thoughts and strategies with you today. Thanks, Glenn. Hey everyone, my name's Jody. I lead the Partnership Strategy and Enablement Group over at Zip Recruiter. So excited to be on this webinar with Career Plug today, working closely with Clint and Natalie. Um, we have a lot of good things I think we wanna to talk to you about today, but also wanna highlight our partnership at the end and really the unique opportunity we're gonna to provide today for the customers joining. Thank you. So here's what you can expect uh, from today's webinar. We're gonna go through some labor trends, challenges, opportunities that have surfaced in the COVID-19 landscape. We'll talk about techniques that recruiting and hiring teams are really utilizing right now to hire the right people and share some success stories of people who have you know, connected with employers even during COVID. And then we'll wrap up, just tell you a little bit more about how we're working with Zip right now and including a special offering to help you get more applicants. So with that, Clint, can you get us started and just kind of share what we've been hearing from businesses right now? Yeah, thanks, Natalie. So kind of a, when I think about the three big things I'm hearing most uh, from business owners and operators right now, one is just they're just trying to figure out what, what do we need to be doing here? Uh, for one, you know, uh, when's the right time to open? There's obviously the legal side of that uh, and complying with that. But then there's also just the when's the right time to open uh, from a business standpoint for us? And then also uh, thinking about our teams and what's going to be safe for them. Uh, so, so really navigating that, uh, trying to stay in touch with employees, particularly who've been uh, furloughed, and figuring out how to, the right way to get them back on, stay engaged with them, and retrain them as, as necessary. And then also just thinking through the, the process. Uh, there's there's so much um, there's so much that's changed uh, in the world. If, if you're using the same process that you were using uh, before COVID-19. Um, you really need to take a moment and readdress that uh, because it's, there's a lot to change and the expectations from candidates are different. And the, the biggest theme that, that I'm going to talk about today is really just building trust. And, and trust is more important than ever uh, right now with candidates. And uh, they've got a lot of questions and they're going to be looking for uh, an employer who uh, they can really connect with on, from a purpose standpoint, but even bigger than purpose. I, I think someone that they trust that's going to take care of them, keep them safe, and be the great employer that they think they'll be. Great. Thanks, Clint. I think that's a good transition to take a deeper dive into the impact COVID-19 has had on hiring. So, Jody, what, from ZipRecruiter's perspective, have we seen as far as like labor trends in the past few months? So a lot of different labor trends, and for anyone watching the news this past weekend, a lot of confusion as well. Um, I, I think what we feel confident saying is that we know unemployment is in the mid-teens, um, but if anything, the workforce is now more op optimistic more than ever, right, since the start of COVID, and that in the last month alone, we saw a multi-million dollar uh, job gain for May. So that being said, I wanted to walk through some of the, kind of the big pieces of what we've seen from an optimism perspective, and that 58% of workers expect finances to return to pre-COVID levels within six months. 70% of workers expect to retain their jobs over the next month. And then another 60% of workers were satisfied with the actions their employers took as a response to COVID-19. 
Um, so if anything, that workplace and workforce optimism is returning. And what we're also seeing on our side is that um, while many kind of white collar industries have shed jobs, there's also been significant increases across the board. So specific industries that are seeing that lift include retail, trade, insurance, financial services, um, and, and several other kind of industries that have seen a larger lift um, than they ever have. Um, and so what we know is that, you know, the labor market is definitely not out of the woods yet, um, and that there are still many unemployed Americans that are seeking labor. Um, but what we know today is that between these two partnerships, these two brands, um, and, and how you can kind of tweak your messaging and your strategy to hire, um, there's a bigger opportunity than ever to capture great talent as many of us are rebuilding our strategy and our business um, post-COVID. Great. And, and so kind of continuing on that thought, um, something we're going to walk through in a couple of minutes is that ZipRecruiter has really leaned into the job seeker perspective. Um, I'm sure, you know, all of us on this call, there's no shortage of information and um, business journal publications and, and podcasts that we can listen to speaking to um, the massive impact that COVID has had on small to medium sized business. Um, but what we have started to look at is what the perspective of the job seeker is. Um, and so we're going to walk through that, but just kind of some high level thoughts that we've captured today is that um, many job seekers are still um, considering and factoring what that risk looks like returning to work. And so we're seeing a lot of jobs that are still remote and can be performed remote um, being the focus of, of what a lot of uh, employers are leading with. Um, but I still think it's, it's a very interesting thing to think through about how your strategy can speak to those fears for uh, job seekers and, and walk through really what their concerns are as you think about onboarding somebody in this, this new world we're living in. Um, the other side of this is that many people are still factoring the benefit versus the risk of returning to work um, due to whatever their uh, child care and health concerns might be. So we've heard a lot of folks that are still um, kind of factoring in what types of support systems they'll have. And if this returns in the fall during flu season, um, you know, potentially will their job be cut again or will they lose the support system they currently have to return to work? Um, so again, really important to factor that into your strategy as we think through what the average job seeker is factoring in and thinking about these days. Um, but again, the positive side that we're about to show you is that um, that talent pool is available, it's growing, and right now at this time, we're seeing a lot more engagement than we have over the last couple months. And so um, we're going to walk through that data today, but again, there is a silver lining to a lot of the challenges we've been seeing over the last 90 days or so. Thanks, Jody. Clint, can you speak a little bit to kind of your perspective of what we witnessed at CareerPlug on this? And this is what I'm hearing from a lot of our clients uh, is that, yeah, that there's, they've got some of the candidates and even some of their former employees aren't sure if they want to come back to work yet. Uh, some uh, have concerns about child care. Uh, you know, who's going to take care of my kids right now? And then also uh, some concerns about uh, people receiving uh, benefits, uh, maybe uh, while they're out of work and, you know, receiving some income and weighing that against um, going back. Uh, there's, what I've, the best strategy that I've heard from people on this is uh, you can't make the decision for the candidates. The, the, the one thing you can do is just be as transparent as possible and, um, and talk about the concerns, address them up front, and share uh, what you're doing um, to address those concerns. And then really, ultimately, make sure the candidates know that you care, number one, about their safety and health, and you want to respect their decision with, uh, with whatever they do. And if it's a great candidate, you know, my message to people is just look, hey, we're ready for you uh, when you are. And, and what that does is it really just builds a trust. And uh, yeah, that might not meet your immediate need that you've got, uh, but if you really start looking out for what's best for the candidates, you'll get what you need and, and then some. Definitely, thanks, Clint. Um, Jody, I know you, get, you can speak a little more to other signs of hope right now and optimism. Yeah. Absolutely. So from the ZipRecruiter side, we're definitely seeing, again, those the signs of optimism. Um, just in the last couple months alone, but specifically these last couple weeks, um, our subscriptions have risen. So we've seen a 16% increase in employers that are coming online to post their jobs on ZipRecruiter. Um, we've seen job seekers really coming back in droves. Again, um, many concerns and challenges there, but, you know, definitely focused on finding new work. Applications have really increased around 50%. That's in the last two weeks alone. 
Um, and we know a lot of this has to do with the different uh, PPP programs offered, the amendments recently moving more towards kind of a rent friendly uh, type of approach as well. And this is also giving employers the ability to grow their business in ways and to uh, really tackle challenges they had from a hiring perspective previously, um, now with more determination than ever. Um, another interesting fact that we've seen and has also, we think, driven a lot of these applications is that May rent payments actually are still rolling in with 80% of U.S. renters having paid rent in the last month. So it does indicate, again, that cash is flowing, consumer spending is increasing across the board, we're seeing hours worked increase for many different reports, um, and of course, as each state kind of relaxes their COVID uh, restrictions there and whatever they had in place from a distancing perspective, um, we're seeing, again, that that hiring um, growth very closely aligned with what those restriction rollbacks look like. Um, and so again, I, I think Clint, as we think about what's most impactful for a business owner, an employer, a hiring manager to take away from today, uh, I, I think again, it's to focus on really what the strategy can and will be post COVID and how to differentiate your messaging and your strategy from everybody else who's also going back now and having to rehire. Yeah, definitely, Jody, and uh, we're going to cover that here in just the next uh, section. And uh, yeah, I I've got some specific ideas and things that you can do. Uh, but again, I, I think it's just starting with the mindset of things are getting better, but they're but they're we're not totally back yet. And uh, our your your candidates are going to have different levels of anxiety about things. We just did a survey uh, amongst uh, my team just about, hey, what, how are you feeling about coming back to work and when, and what do you want that to look like? And uh, they, the responses were, were pretty much all over the place. Some people were like, hey, I'm good to go. I trust you guys to take care of us. And then other ones um, expressed some much bigger concerns. So you have to recognize that that's, that's kind of what's gonna be going on out in the talent pool right now too. And uh, you really gotta kind of work down to the least common denominator and try to address everyone's concerns, which means addressing the concerns of some of those people who are, are still really anxious or, or have other situations, uh, family uh, situations and things like that, that, that they need to consider. Right. Definitely. I think that's the, a great transition to talk a little more about the job seeker perspective. Um, so I know ZipRecruiter did a recent survey, I think of 2,500 job seekers, just to understand what they're thinking about right now as they approach employment. Um, so at a high level, there seems to be more urgency as they re-enter the market. But Jody, can you just provide us a little more context and what you've been learning from job seekers? Absolutely. So as she mentioned, um, ZipRecruiter just ran a survey again that really focused on what the job seeker perspective was and then how highly motivated were job seekers to pursue new employment opportunities. Um, so again, there's a little bit of a bias here considering these are people that were coming to the ZipRecruiter site. Um, but again, this methodology again was, was capturing 2,500 um, different findings here. So what we know is that job seekers that are newly un unemployed, 75% of them were employed in February and 47% have since been laid off or furloughed with a 69% that are not expecting to return to the same job. So again, huge opportunity for hiring, uh, hiring managers and employers as we think about capturing talent that potentially wasn't available before prior to COVID. Uh, and then from a motivation standpoint, we know that job seekers are highly motivated and looking for work. Um, and that 67% are still seeking full-time work. Uh, around 22% would be happy accepting a role with any type of uh, you know, full-time, part-time gig contract and 8% are focused on that part-time work. And so that being said, again, um, there's different ways to think about posting jobs and potentially starting somebody part-time and moving up to full-time kind of as, as resumption of economic activity increases. So a lot of different considerations there. And then what we know is that 65% of respondents are very likely to apply to jobs right now. So it's more important than ever to ensure visibility for your job boards, your job posts, um, your job descriptions, you know, including a lot of the different um, motivational aspects of working for your business or kind of what your, your core mission is. That's more important than ever and that you know, job seekers are really scouring the internet. They're looking at different places to find these types of jobs and how you stand out is really gonna be the factor here that matters. And what we found that was, that was quite interesting is that actually only two and a half percent answered that unemployment benefits outweighed the risk or stress of finding a job. And I know when I shared this with Clint, um, we, we both found this quite interesting because the feedback from many clients 
from his side ha have been just that, right? That um, a lot of the relief that's been distributed and dispensed, um, you know, has hurt the ability for employers to bring back these employees. Um, but again, from, from a motivational standpoint, that's not what job seekers are telling us. And I think more than ever, um, you know, we're seeing them voting with those applications increasing. Uh, and so again, as we continue to, to track that, we will be running additional surveys available on zip.com um, to, to take a look at updated results here. And as we transition to the next slide here, when we think about how immediate the need is for a new job, again, 39% of job seekers are telling us that they are actively looking. And the states that we've really seen uh, the most applications coming from, the most jobs being posted um, are the states li listed here on the left. And it, what's interesting is if you note uh, what a lot of the different local restrictions and what's been rolled back, these kind of, kind of correspond quite nicely with that. Um, so again, a lot of different opportunity here for employers to be thinking about bringing back their staff, hiring new staff with a different skill set, and really focusing on the fact that getting somebody onboarded and making sure that they're, you know, that's communicated up front and that hiring experience uh, will be crucial as job seekers are looking for work right now. And I wanted to include, as we look at the next slide here, we wanted to include some of the top industries and verticals that we've seen the greatest lift in. Uh, and again, these closely align here with the verticals that uh, I know Career Plug primarily focuses in. But specifically for finance and insurance, what we've seen is over the last 30 days, there's been an increase of 665,000 clicks. So these are clicks to ZipRecruiter jobs within our ecosystem for finance and insurance-based jobs. Um, we've seen about 409,000 job seekers. These are unique job seekers in our ecosystem who have been clicking on those finance and insurance jobs. And we've had 65,000 unique or related jobs um, within finance and, and insurance posted just in ZipRecruiter. Um, so again, really, really high opportunity here if you find yourself in one of these industries. The top five job titles are going to include staff accountant, bookkeeper, senior accountant, accounts payable specialist, accountant, and then again, those top five cities, as we saw earlier, Houston, New York City, Los Angeles, Dallas, and Atlanta. And again, um, we're seeing a lot of these jobs that are being you know, hired with urgency. There's a lot of messaging around the ability to work from home or work flexibly. Uh, and again, we, we continue to kind of see these grow. If we take a look at the next slide, um, I know we've got a lot of folks on here that represent the retail space. And so again, retail has seen a 12% increase um, just within February to March. So we're, we're starting to see those numbers trend up. Again, a lot of that is part-time work as opposed to full-time work. Um, but again, an increase there in that um, there's been 215,000 job seekers um, in our ecosystem, again, who have been clicking on those jobs, 58,000 jobs posted. Uh, and the top titles within that industry include general manager, retail sales associate, cashier, retail merchandiser, and retail store associate. Um, so again, by the droves, very large increase here. Quite unexpected, I think, against other industries. Um, but, you know, the data is the truth here. Again, top uh, cities that are hiring for this right now, Houston, Las Vegas, Atlanta, New York City, and Dallas. And then I think the last one we chose to include here that is likely not a surprise to many folks on the phone is that healthcare has obviously seen one of the biggest impacts and increases across the board for hiring. And there's a, there's a couple interesting takeaways from this. Um, so again, the biggest increase actually was for geriatric nursing support and healthcare with 374% increase. And that's, that's month over month. Um, when we look at certified nursing assistance, again, a 10% increase and a 5% increase in assisted living caregivers. Um, again, I don't think that the titles here are shocking, but if we take a look at the next slide, what I think is most interesting, and many people are gonna be able to relate to this, is that the amount of people that are applying to healthcare roles, which are you know, traditionally governed by certification and education, and that there's a very clear threshold to apply uh, for that type of role, we've actually seen that one in three job seekers applying to healthcare roles actually come from completely different industries. So 15% are coming from leisure and hospitality, with 7% coming from retail, and about 6.5% coming from business. Um, so again, with that kind of increased demand that we're seeing with healthcare, um, that talent pool is really expanding and job seekers are starting to apply to things that, um, you know, traditionally would have been a stopgap. 
So again, the opportunity to capture new talent, you know, whether you're in healthcare, retail, finance, insurance, any of these industries, to capture somebody who doesn't come from your industry, who doesn't have the tenure and the experience, you're going to see a lot more of that. And so I think what Clint and I had discussed is how are your processes really going to take that into account? Are you going to be able to have, you know, just as good of, of hiring conversations and interview questions with somebody who's going to come in lacking kind of um, industry or even baseline knowledge about this, but potentially has, you know, really other strong skill sets and competencies um, that make them a fit for this role. And so it's really an opportunity that we'd like to suggest, you know, you take advantage of, you consider, and you remap a lot of your hiring strategy to factor in how somebody who, again, has a lot of those strengths, but no uh, industry expertise is going to be a good fit potentially for your team. And then as we take a look again on that note about the competency piece, um, what we know again is that job seekers right now looking for roles, they're representing a wide variety of industries and that, you know, almost everybody was is significantly impacted by COVID. So that being said, we've seen that 55% of job seekers have a bachelor's degree or higher on ZipRecruiter.com. We've got 64% that are actively looking at those job sites daily. They're doing this through mobile. So again, job descriptions are more important than ever to be precise and to the point is that, you know, you know, a lot of this is being consumed um, by mobile device. And when we look at the span of, of kind of age ranges and genders, it's it's pretty fluid here and that almost 50-50 here for male, female. Um, but the age ranges, again, we're seeing a, a mixture across the board for people that are applying to these roles. And again, these different types of, of industries and competencies and skill sets that these job singers are bringing um, really presents you know, a great opportunity to retool your hiring strategy and how you can kind of think about um, you know, again, what are those skills? What are those competencies that you couldn't get before COVID that now are readily available and, and are likely, you know, applying to roles and or seeing your job out there in the wild? And so I, I think to, to transition over to you, Clint, to talk through kind of what you and I discussed are kind of the core competencies and the core considerations that employers should be thinking about through this candidate experience. Would you walk us through kind of how you think about this and what you think is the most successful strategy for a business owner or a hiring manager to factor in? Yeah, sure. So here are the things that I always tell people um, and that I was talking to people about before uh, COVID-19 even came around. And uh, if, if you want to win in uh, hiring, you, you've got to you got to focus on the candidate experience. That's going to differentiate you. I break it down into three areas. One is make it easy uh, for people to research you and find you. Uh, if if someone searches for your company online, what are they seeing? Uh, type in your company right now and type in jobs. Uh, see what comes up. Uh, how does your how do your reviews look on Glassdoor? Do you have um, do you have a site that comes up? Do you you, on your careers page, do you have uh, authentic photos and testimonials? Just being visible and authentic and allowing people to learn uh, more about you because they, they are out there doing research. Uh, the second piece is make it easy for them to apply. Uh, if you're working with us already, that's, uh, that's something that kind of comes uh, you know, right out of the box. Uh, everything's easy to use on mobile, things like that. The one area I guess I would look out for uh, is with things like pre-screen questions. Don't go overboard with these. Uh, we usually recommend people use three to five questions. Uh, and if you have open-ended questions that ask you know, someone to uh, type in an answer, I would limit that to one or two. Uh, just make it easy for people to apply because recognize we're seeing probably 70% or more of candidates um, searching and applying from their phone right now. So you've got to keep that in mind. And then the one I'm going to dig into a little bit more later is uh, easy to track. And what I mean by that is people are looking for feedback. Um, they've applied. Uh, and they want to know what the status of their application is. And um, it, it's really just about following up. And I'll, I'll talk about some strategies more specifically on that. But one thing that we did recently was conduct our own survey of uh, candidates. I think we talked to 500 different candidates post COVID. And, and, and this is the stuff that they were talking about that really came through. Uh, number one, transparency. People are really looking to know what the compensation is, what the benefits are uh, up front. If you, if you don't have those in your job description, uh, I would really consider putting something in there about that. There's uh, ways now uh, to where a lot of that information gets displayed um, on the job boards. Uh, and it's gonna, that might be the difference between a candidate um, clicking on your job posting uh, or not. Uh, so you wanna be able to get their attention and, and people wanna know up front. 
if you're not sure exactly, let's say it's a sales position type of role, it's okay, it's okay to give a range. Say, here's kind of the expected earnings uh, for this position. I think that that's fine. Uh, they're also value and safety. They want to know how you are uh, keeping them safe and, and how you're focused on keeping customers safe. Uh, just what I would do first, first and foremost is recognizing that that's important. And then whatever detail that you can provide on how you're doing that, um, I, would, I would do that. If, if you don't, if you're not quite sure how to word some of this, uh, one thing that I always recommend doing is uh, go, going online and searching for uh, similar jobs and seeing maybe what other companies uh, in your space and how they commu are communicating about this, uh, just to give you some ideas. And the last thing I just talked about before is really the authenticity. Uh, people more than ever are, uh, are craving authenticity. They want to know who they're going to be working with. They want to feel um, like they trust you. And, and that because a lot of people got burned through this whole thing and, uh, and they got laid off right out, of, right out of the blue. It kind of reminds me of what happened in 2008 a little bit where corporate America just kind of, you know, said, hey, the, the lifelong employee concept is gone now and you're just, you're out of the job. And what it did was it really had uh, candidates take stock of, um, of their lives and what they really wanted out of work. It's not quite the same situation, but it is one of those moments um, in our lives where we're, we're really open to making some big changes, like, like what Jody said. And uh, I think more than ever, people are looking for a connection to some purpose. Uh, so if you can be real clear about what your mission is, what your core values are, uh, and really what you want to achieve as a company, and even, even some information about what situation you're in right now, that I think is going to ring true for so many candidates, and, and it's going to be a real magnet for your uh, hiring process. So in terms of actions, things that I would think about doing right off the bat, uh, I would go back and apply to one of your jobs right now uh, as if you were a candidate. Go out there, look for the job, read through it, and say, okay, if I was a candidate today, would I apply to this job? And what questions do I have up front that maybe the job description doesn't answer? And then go in and try to, try, try to answer as many of those questions as you can. Uh, make sure that the job descriptions read well, and uh, just provide all the details. And then really work on your own elevator pitch. Uh, and I'm thinking about this, some of this should come through in the job description, but also when you have that initial conversation with a candidate and during the interview, what is it about, uh, about your company that's really gonna get them excited and gonna get the right candidate uh, wanting to come and work for you? Uh, I think that uh, it's a very competitive environment right now, so you've gotta figure out what it is that you're gonna differentiate. Uh, and then kind of alongside that, I would say think creatively, what else can you be doing um, to attract candidates? Uh, I think boomerang hires is something that uh, I had a webinar about with another company last week. Um, in some uh, industries, obviously there's boomerang hires of people that you've just furloughed, but there's also situations where uh, people may have worked for you in the past. And it maybe is a good time right now to reach out to them just to see how they're doing and, and see what's going on in their career. Uh, if you're not doing a whole lot with um, referral programs right now too, I would heavily, uh, highly recommend that you put some energy into those because uh, some of our best hires have come from uh, rehires as well as referral hires. And the last thing is following up. 30% of job seekers, and I'm surprised this number isn't even higher, um, said that responsiveness after the initial application was the most important thing that they were looking for when it comes to a positive experience. Now we just completed a, uh, on the next slide I'll show you, we, we, we just completed a uh, time to contact, or, or an analysis of a bunch of different attributes um, of, of all of our clients and their jobs over the past year. And uh, we've got this analyzed by industry. If, if, you're in, if you want some more information on that, you should go to our blog, look it up and you can download this report. But one of the things that really came through to me was I looked at the time to contact. So this is when someone applies to the job, how long does it take uh, for you to actually follow up with them? I was really surprised when I saw that the average across uh, our entire system is about eight days. And I asked my team to take a closer look and I said, all right, well, what are the best companies doing? Like if we looked at the top 20% of companies, that, that, that upper echelon, what's the, what's the standard for them? And the answer was significantly different. It was one day. So, so they're getting in touch with people within one day. And what I've seen, especially if you're talking about hourly workers, a, a lot of times it's better to be first um, than it is to be best. Um, I have some industries that we work with where, they, where they'll say, if, if you haven't connected with the candidate 
within 48 hours uh, of receiving the resume, you might as well just delete it or tear it up because it's, uh, they're gonna be gone. They're gonna be moving on to something else. So uh, if some of you have talked to me before, uh, you've heard some of the analogies I make uh, with kind of like receiving sales leads, uh, you would never wait eight days uh, to get back to a potential customer. Uh, but your employees could be way more valuable to you than any individual customer could because they're multipliers for your business. Um, why would you treat them any differently? In some ways, you should almost treat them with more urgency and get back to them. Uh, if you're not using some of our tools like the fast track notifications and uh, the text notifications for fast track, uh, I was at a conference before all this COVID stuff happened and I talked to one of our clients and she said that uh, she's in a really competitive space for massage therapists and she got a... Uh, a qualified massage therapist that applied and uh, she received a text message and she was at dinner and she got up, went outside and got on the phone and talked to the candidate. And the candidate was so impressed that, you know, she was in the next day and it was a done deal. The person was hired. Now that's really extreme, but I want you to know what people are willing to do right now to be able to get top talent. And uh, you got to think about what you're doing yourself. Uh, on the next slide, I want to talk about one specific tip that I think can be a game changer for you. And that's text messaging. If you're not using our text messaging uh, tool already, I highly recommend it. Uh, we ran some numbers on this. Uh, the text messages are being opened 4.9 times more than email. Um, you're getting responses 7.5 times more than email and um, 60 times faster than email. So if the game is really about speed, uh, you've got to get them on a text. The email, they're not checking it. Uh, when you call someone even, you, think, you may think, hey, calling them, that's kind of the extra thing to do. And I'm not really not calling, uh, but I don't know. I get a lot of calls on my cell phone now, and I usually don't pick them up if, if I don't know who the number is. And then it, it goes into my voicemail. Who knows if they even have a voicemail set up? What I've seen is that the text messaging is by far the most effective way to do this. So if you're not using it already, you can uh, talk to our team or there's a way within CareerPlug um, to be able to add that feature uh, to your account. Great. Thanks, Clint. Um, so I'm going to shift us a little bit and talk about strategies if you're not hiring yet, right? Businesses are in all different states right now. Some are reopening, some are getting ready, some are still on pause. So this is actually a really good opportunity if you're not hiring or not full steam yet to revisit your hiring process and really reinvigorate it so you can get ready to hire the right people. So a few things that, that I want to share um, from my HR perspective is, one, this is a great time to focus on some internal improvements you can do. So it says realigning your hiring goals with the situation. Um, basically a way to say that if you're hiring, your job descriptions, your processes looks exactly the same pre-COVID as it does today, you should probably take another look. What what kind of skills and behaviors do you need from your team right now? Do you have job descriptions and interview guides that match that? Um, dig a little bit into your strategy to make sure uh, you're good going forward. With that, ways to organize and improve your hiring process. Most of you are clients with Career Plug, so that's you know getting organized in, in the system. Do you have the interview guides you need set up? Our hiring managers trained not only on how to use the system, but on how to ask the right questions and follow up for the skills and behaviors you need. Improving candidate experience, right? That starts before you, you make a hire and post a job. So what Clint talked about there, asking yourself those questions, what, what can I do to make this a better experience for candidates? Uh, I wanna reiterate the thing he said about going to apply to your own job that can be really eye-opening going through that process yourself. And then carry that forward into your onboarding to new hire training, do new hires have the information they need early on? How are they getting acclimated to not only the skills of the job, but, but your culture? The way to do that is to ask recent new hires about their experience and get their feedback. Um, boomerang hiring strategy, Clint mentioned that as well. That's rehiring former employees, uh, either if they're recently furloughed or laid off due to COVID uh, or you know top talent that may have left for one reason or another in the past. Big thing with that is just what's your communication strategy? How are you staying in touch with them? And if you haven't been staying in touch with employees you do plan to rehire, this is the right time to, to start. And then lastly about retention, this is just ask your current team what, what they like about working with you, what they liked about their hiring process and their experiences 
How can you capitalize on your strengths and integrate that with your hiring? And also surface opportunities for, for you to improve and really put a best foot forward when you're attracting candidates. Other thing I want to mention is using your data, right? You want to be data driven. So there's a few metrics you can keep in mind on the slide, but main thing I want to say is, you know, just like you're treating a sales lead and a candidate the same, you know, treat your hiring process like a sales funnel. So look at conversion metrics from how many people click or view your job. So that's when they, you know, are on a job board, they see your job posting to then apply. Um, and then also when between each hiring stage. So how many candidates are getting from that review and phone screen to hire? That can tell you a lot about where things might be breaking down, where people might be having poor experiences, if they're withdrawing from your hiring process. And then in general, ask yourself questions about source quality. Where are your hires coming from? Where are you getting the most applicants? Um, what's your applicant flow look like now compared to other seasons? Um, what's changed? Using these metrics, a lot of them are available within your career plug account, can help you make better decisions going forward. And off that, uh, a couple stats I just wanted to share of how you can kind of be that top 20%, as, as Clint said, for the time to contact. Um, so this is also in our recent a recruiting benchmark report that you can find on our, our blog. If you go to just careerplug.com, you can find that resource there for more detail. But we found for job views converting to applicants, aiming for about a 10% conversion rate is a pretty good way to go. But if you want to be top performing, 15 to 20%. So that metric, if you're doing well on that, says you're using a really compelling job descriptions, right? Your job titles are clear. When people click on the job title on the job board and get to your job description, it matches up. It's not something they didn't expect. And that the application process is really simple which is an advantage of working with CareerPlug because that's uh, what we're all about. And then for how many applicants convert to hires, this varied widely by industry. Again, recommend looking at that report to get a little bit of deeper dive there. Uh, the big thing here though, is just making it a really personal experience will help you outperform, right? You want to you know, reach out to high quality candidates quickly, communicate why you're the best option for them. Um, and because if you have, you know, poor interview experience, that can really drive a low interview to higher rate. So thinking about that candidate experience really holistically throughout the process. Yeah, I'll add one thing to this, Natalie. You know, it's, uh, we're seeing a lot of things come back and recover, but, but it, we also are hearing from some clients that it's still tough out there right now to attract the right candidates or to attract enough of them. And, uh, I'm going to give you the same message that I give my team, you know, uh, as we've gone through this crisis together is just think about what you can control in, in the whole process and, uh, and work on improving those aspects. So the, the pie might be a little bit smaller, uh, but what can you do? What changes can you make uh, to get a larger slice of that smaller pie? Uh, most, most of the, your competitors are not doing all these things. They're not doing these best practices. And there's ways to be able to get more than your fair share of qualified applicants out there. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's not always about getting more applicants into the top of the funnel. A lot of times it's about how well are you converting those applicants into interviews and ultimately into hires. So just, just think about those things and kind of approach it with that mindset. And, and the market will continue to pick back up and the pie will, will start to increase again. But in the meantime, I would just focus really on, on the aspects of the process that you can control to get as much of it as you can. Definitely, thank you. So last thing I'll say um, to kind of maximize your downtime to your favor before you really are in, in hiring mode again, um, or if you are in hiring mode, these are just good things to do and think about is updating your referral program. So you wanna make it easy for advocates, whether that's current employees or even your customers to refer candidates to you. Sometimes that's as simple as asking for referrals and giving uh, employees, customer is an easy way to, to get those uh, potential candidates to you. Adding an incentive doesn't hurt either. Uh, at Career Plug, we offer a $500 bonus when an employee refers a candidate that we end up hiring. Um, so, so ways to kind of reach out within your own network there. Administrative tasks, right? Things that can really bog us down when we're actually in hiring mode. There's policies you need to update, especially in post-COVID. Um, in your training materials, 
again, in your job descriptions. Um, internal hiring manager training, we mentioned that already. It's a good time to look at that. And then just automating any repetitive tasks. Uh, career plug helps a lot with that. So make sure you're kind of utilizing the full system can make your hiring process much more streamlined. And then one more time, because we, we said it a few times, but just building your employment brand that comes back to being authentic and helping build trust with potential candidates. So even things just like staying active on social media, being present in your community, uh, updating your careers page if you haven't done it in a while, like use real photos of your team, talk about the situation and your company's story as it relates to right now, and then go engage with review sites if you're not doing that already. So Glassdoor, Indeed, any other place that people are leaving reviews online, make sure you're active there and responding. Uh, job seekers, you know, this is an official step, but th they all go there. They're all researching your company and, and looking to learn about you. And if you're engaging with those sites, it's much positive, more positive experience for your brand. All right, so I wanna transition a little bit to some success stories because it's been a tough labor market the past few months, but there are success stories of candidates connecting with employers during this time. So Jody, I want to give it back to you because I know ZipRecruiter has collected some of those stories. What can you share with us? Absolutely. Yeah. So ZipRecruiter has been really focused on the job seeker perspective throughout this, as I mentioned earlier, um, not only thinking about what, what job seekers um, are contemplating and how we can relay that message to employers who work with us, um, but also thinking through, again, all the features uh, and, and how we can make our product that is so rich in many different areas, as I'm sure yours is, really work for job seekers on their behalf during COVID, um, given that, you know, there's so many pieces of consideration for someone who's been laid off, um, who believes that their job will not likely return and now they're potentially considering other industries. Um, it, it's quite a lot, right, on a personal note as well as a professional one to start factoring in how, how different your new kind of professional future might be. And so ZipRecruiter has been capturing um, real authentic job seeker success stories throughout this. Um, to be clear, this is really job seekers that have come through ZipRecruiter and applied to a job. We've gotten their permission to share their story, capture a little bit of that feedback and share that with you today. Um, so again, you're looking at a couple here on the screen um, and, and all of these were hired again for, for new companies, new roles um, right after COVID started. So in this first one, we have Andrea who was again laid off due to COVID. Um, her hiring manager at CVS recognized that she was still an excellent pharmacist and hired her in the most authentic interview she'd ever experienced. So this helped restore her confidence as a professional and taught her the important life lesson to never give up after having been laid off. And then we've got Joe over at Home Depot, who again was suddenly unemployed almost overnight on March 10th due to the pandemic. Um, she signed up for job alerts on our side, many of which you guys can sign up just by sending emails as well. It's, it's the same type of concept, right? And after two weeks of applying to jobs, um, she was hired at Home Depot on April 1st. Again, she focused here on the online application and the ease of use and being able to quickly do that, move through a lot of the screening requirements um, and take this new role. And then we've got Harry who joined JP Morgan. Um, again, this was a new opportunity for him. He did not come from this industry. Um, so again, step up in many ways for a different role here. Um, and, and he found this job on ZipRecruiter, again, quickly applied, um, you know, had never applied for this type of role before and is now uh, happily employed there. So um, this is just a couple of the success stories that we have. If you look at our website, we update them daily. Uh, and our CEO actually highlights them on a weekly standup as well with the company, uh, because I think it's really important for us all, again, to think through um, kind of the human aspect of how COVID has impacted us and how we can make sure that not only the company mission and your values are tied to bringing somebody new on board, but just being really cognizant of what those fears um, and, and challenges look like in today's world. So we're happy to share these with you. And we hope that through our partnership with Career Plug, we'll be able to capture more of these and to be able to circulate them you know, with you and tangent with you as brands um, to let other job seekers know there is hope um, and there is new opportunity and silver linings uh, in this whole COVID experience. Thanks, Jody. So before we, we dive into some Q&A with everybody, uh, that's a great transition to just talk a little bit more about how CareerPlug and ZipRecruiter are working together um, and can really create more opportunities for you as you know, CareerPlug clients. So Jody, can you just tell us a little more about Zip and how you're working with us? 
Absolutely. So for anyone not familiar with ZipRecruiter, if you haven't heard us on a podcast by now, right, our favorite place to be, um, the ZipRecruiter mission is really to actively connect people to their next great opportunity. So we focus on both the employer experience as well as the job seeker. Um, and we're really and truly the leading online employer marketplace right now. Um, so something that's really unique about us and that will be captured through this partnership is um, much of our technology is AI powered and that we're really connecting um, job seekers to roles that they potentially aren't seeing or um, you know, hadn't applied to directly themselves. We're actually matching them to roles and getting them to apply to your jobs. So again, this really provides a great interactive experience and in that we're reaching them on mobile devices. Um, we're doing great match again so that these candidates, um, you know, what, what we're bringing to you, we're highlighting as the best matches, the best place to start um, with the recruitment and the hiring process. Um, and to date, we've helped millions of businesses of all sizes, all verticals, all locations um, be able to, again, um, meet opportunity where it, where it starts um, and ensure that we're providing a really seamless experience. And, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this partnership today. Um, so if we kind of think about what that looks like, uh, again, we're engaging with millions of job seekers that are signing up. Again, you saw we've had a 50% increase in applications in the last couple of weeks. Again, these are job seekers that are finding us through our infrastructure, um, but also through job boards and that ZipRecruiter distributes jobs to 100 plus job boards every time you post a job through Career Plug. Uh, and so again, we'll be able to bring that value to you today through your existing relationship with Career Plug, meaning you don't leave the Career Plug interface. Um, you don't have to change your existing workflows. All of this is provided to you directly through um, what you know to be kind of your existing ETS through Career Plug. And so you'll see an option when you log in um, here. We've got an example of it on the screen where you can actually sign up to start taking advantage of this offer. And then I think if we swap to the next slide, um, we'll see again that this is all you have to provide in order to move forward with that. So again, the offering here is that all of your jobs will be distributed for at least, uh, or for 30 days. And again, that distribution goes to at least 100 job boards, as well as our great match, our smart match technology, where we as a recruiter are matching these roles um, and these new opportunities to job seekers within our own network and getting them to apply directly to your job. Um, so again, very simple process. Um, you don't have to leave Career Plug. Um, we work quite close with the Career Plug team. So if you have questions or concerns or, or want to talk strategy, um, both sides, both organizations are prepared to speak with you today. Uh, and again, you can easily see this within the interface. Or if you're not seeing this, you can be prompted by going directly to the site, which we'll send out right after this call today. Um, so again, at Clint, Clint knows we've, this has been a deal for a long time in the making. Uh, we're quite excited to offer this value to these customers today and again, be able to provide the ability to have your job distributed to 100 job boards, um, the zip network, and, and never leave the Career Plug interface. Yeah, Jody, I'm really excited about the partnership and um, to all the clients out there. I think this is a great deal and something that's a no-brainer to, to give a try, especially right now as uh, you know, you're, you're kind of looking at your budget and, and trying to save a little money, but then at the same time, trying to get staffed up again and, and looking and to take advantage of the talent that's out there right now. Uh, when we set up this partnership with ZipRecruiter, uh, I asked them, I said, is there any way that we can let clients kind of have a little bit of a taste of um, the candidate pool and the, the results um, without them having to spend a bunch up front? And uh, they, they went above and beyond in that department and are really investing heavily um, to help you guys get some results up front without uh, any expectations up front in return. So uh, I'm really excited about it. It's really easy to activate. Uh, basically just have to, to fill out the form, hit go, and then uh, the rest will kind of um, get to work on its own. Great. So we are at the, the end of our, our planned content here. Um, so before, we go, we leave you, we have some questions for Q and A. So if you do have questions, um, feel free to put them in the Q and A box and Clint and Jody, if you're up for it, I will read some, some out for you. So you sure. can use these last eight minutes or so here, um, just have a conversation. Um, so one question that just came in as we were, were talking about this offering is how long will the 30 day offering be available? That's a great question. So I think um, from our perspective, um, the offering is going to be available at least for another year. Does that sound right to you, Clint? And that any new customer that comes on 
has the ability to take advantage of this offering. Yeah, I think that that's, I mean, that, that's great. We, we, we basically, we had a timeline in place um, and, and then COVID-19 stuff came. So we've become a lot more flexible with this offering. So, so the answer is like, if, you know, I saw one come in right now. If you're not, uh, if you're not open yet, and maybe you're not ready to start staffing up, yeah, wait a little bit until you're there. This isn't going to go away. Uh, as we get closer to maybe uh, when when this deal is going to expire, there'll be plenty of communication that will go out um, to do that. That being said, I wouldn't wait. Uh, if, if you've got a need um, to get out there and to start looking for people, uh, take advantage of this thing right now because there's um, I'm seeing a lot of talent come through um, this um, this source. And I want to make sure that all of our clients are, get, are taking advantage of that. Great. Um, one question from, from Thomas, what upgrades are you implementing at Career Product to help with rehires? Yeah, Thomas, hey, thanks for that question. A uh, couple things. One, I, I think you've got uh, clients, uh, I'd say, fall into two buckets when it comes to like some of the more immediate rehires. Um, it, I think a lot of it's a question of are you actually – um, taking them through, um, taking them through a hiring process, and, and I recommend that you do. Some people, I think, are, are you know, they're kind of like, look, I, I know who this person is, that I'm going to bring them back. And in that case, they're kind of circumventing some of the hiring process. One thing you could do, and what I would recommend generally, is uh, create a uh, condensed hiring process for your rehires. Um, if you contact us at support, we can work with you to create a job and a separate uh, workflow that might just be review, interview, hire, or, or something along those lines, very simple, that you can take those uh, candidates through. And if there's someone that maybe comes in through one of their jobs that's a former employee, uh, you can transfer them over into that job to make them run through that process. Uh, one other thing that we just added is the ability to add you know, a, a video conferencing link into your interview invites. Uh, you know, so if, you, if you've got a link on Zoom or whatever else, you can do that. We, we are looking at opportunities to integrate with, with them as well as um, Google's Hangouts, rename Meet Now. Um, I, I can't promise any specific dates on that, but that's something I think that's going to be a big win for clients as, uh, you know, face-to-face -face interviews are just not going to be as common, especially um, on the front of the process anymore. Uh, on the, on, if you're using our onboarding product, uh, we've got some uh, resources in place for you to be able to create a streamlined checklist um, to get those um, candidates rehired and, and not necessarily make them go through the entire new hire package. Great. Uh, I see a, a couple questions about where they can find the report we mentioned a few times. So I'll, I'll just answer that quickly. Um, one, when we send follow-up for this webinar, we'll, we'll send you a, a PDF of the slides, um, and I'll also link to where you can find that recruiting benchmark report. If you want to get it before we send that email out, you can go to crewplug.com and go to our blog, and you'll, you'll find it in the Resources Center there. Um, it's called 2020 Recruiting Benchmarks Report, and it, it summarizes what we found across all our client base and then breaks out into specific industries. I think the question that came in was, was um, home care, so you'll see healthcare in there, um, as well as I think ten different other other industries. Yeah, and I don't know if we had specifically the hair salons, but we have we have um, some kind of personal care uh, industry that that I think you know may include massage therapy and some stuff other stuff like that. But it should give you a pretty good idea for your market. Um, I saw one question about just clarifying how long the trial lasts and what to kind of expect from ZipRecruiter's end once they start the trial. So once you start the trial, the trial will go for 30 days. And again, it's, it's the ability to distribute all of your jobs. So there's no limit there. Um, from our side, you can expect that someone from our team will reach out to you typically within a week or so of you starting that trial. Um, they'll make sure to answer any of your questions. They can lend strategy, support there. Um, and again, if you are happy with that trial at the end of that, um, you can come on directly to ZipRecruiter, still live within the career plug offering, but continue to capture that ZipRecruiter level of distribution um, directly through us as well. And so uh, again, your point of contact will be reaching out typically within a week or so of, of you uh, turning on the platform. 
And then you'll also see all the analytics as well from, from your side within Career Plug. So pretty straightforward. Um, you're getting all the same features and value of what you would get through a ZipRecruiter Direct platform. It's a pretty high um, value and, and a very unique offering that we're doing with Career Plug. Um, but we do believe now more than ever is a really great time um, to have these types of partnerships and provide this value, especially um, to Career Plug, as again, they, they align so closely with our mission. Great. I see a good, a good kind of clarifying question here. So I thought the career plug was already posting to Zip. What is the difference with this new program? So this, this program is actually going to be that distribution to, again, to 100 plus job boards. So I think previously you guys had the ability to have your job posted to zip.com, meaning any one of us could go to ziprecruiter.com and, and sort through jobs there. Um, but in this case, what's happening is that the job gets distributed to 100 plus job boards. So we've got about a, a thousand plus relationships. And so where we opt to send that specific job within those 100, again, is just based on best fit, match, location, type of role, niche, et cetera. Um, so again, you're really getting the value of full distribution. That's for active job seekers who are going to different external job boards as well as zip.com. Um, and they're applying to those roles directly and you're, you're capturing that within Career Plug. And this is just to be clear, this is what our standard offering would be if you came to Zip Direct. Um, that's what you'd be getting. Again, we're just providing this value through the Career Plug interface. No change to workflow. And where can people learn more about what the cost would be after the trial ends? The, the contact that will be reaching out to you will be able to provide unique special pricing um, specific to this partnership. And so we can provide that directly. We've also got a dedicated customer support and service line that we can provide that's an email and a phone number as well um, to speak directly to us. Great. A um, lot, lot of great questions coming in. We're, we're almost at time. Um, so I'll answer the couple housekeeping ones I see. Uh, again, to reiterate, we're going to send this to all of you. You don't have to give me your email. We have it since you registered with us. I'll send out the slide deck and some of these resources. We are going to put a recording of the webinar on our blog and on our help center. So you'll be able to, to view it there as well. I'll try to get that up quickly and, and link it out in a follow up email. Um, if you do have other questions that we didn't answer, which I know there, there are plenty here, really encourage you to reach out to our support team. Um, or feel free to reply to that email. Um, I'm happy to point you in the right direction too. Again, I'm the director of HR at Career Plug um, and can try to get some of these questions answered. Yeah, and I think there's a way for us to see the, uh, who's answered, who's asked the question. So we could pull a report and uh, follow up with you. There were a couple of questions that came in there about your specific account that uh, I think would be best if we just follow up with you directly on those. Um, hey, the one thing I'll say, though, is that, that I look, this has been a real challenging time for all of us. Um, I, uh, I really appreciate all of you and your business. And I, I want you to know that we're working hard for you to help you and your business succeed uh, in this time and get back to uh, success and beyond that where you were before. Uh, so just let us know what we can do to help you uh, do that, because really our mission is making hiring easier for you. And uh, we, we want to be that resource for you. So, so thanks for the time today. And uh, yeah, we're, we're really excited about uh, continuing to work with you and, and with this new partnership. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you so for joining. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Clint. We'll, we'll wrap up now um, and just expect that follow-up from us. Have a good afternoon. All right, bye-bye. Bye.